Roy Williams. We've known each other for a long time. <laughs> yeah. yeah and... You actually were my pupil, you know, a long time ago. Let's not talk about that. Yeah, not... a long time ago. <laughs> and... Don't age me. And no, no, it's wonderful though, because it feels like, to me, the culmination of everything in a sense that you've been doing as a writer, that you're on to a next phase now as a writer. Well, definitely, definitely with this play, I very much wanted to write a sort of free generational piece about black British experience from Windrush to my generation, the ones who grew up in the sort of 70s and the 80s, the ones who rioted in the, in the 80s to express their anger at being treated like second class citizens in their own country. And, and then the third generation. I think for me, the play came about when I sort of realized um, we're not kids anymore. Our generation, we're getting older, we're having kids of our own and some are having grandkids as well. And I just thought that was just an interesting moment of time to write about, to write about that specific generation. And I just felt, I haven't written this yet. I haven't written this play yet. Can you tell me briefly the plot of The Fellowship and why it's called that? The plot of Fellowship centres on two sisters, Dawn and Marcy, living in South London, England. The play is set in 2019. I, d I placed it in that time deliberately because I wanted them to be living in a world where the whole issue about the Windrush scandal and to a certain degree Brexit came up, although the play is not specifically about either of those two themes, but the play does touch on them. And they both, I think, just reached the point in their lives, you know, they're in their 50s and they realise they're not the same young, angry black characters they were in, in the 80s. They've both got careers, they've both got mortgages, one of them has children, and whether you like it or not, things like that, life softens who you were 40 years previously. Why is it called The Fellowship? Members of my family coined that phrase. Whenever we uh, meet up and go and see a big film, we always call ourselves The Fellowship. So that, that was my first spark of writing this, this story. I wanted to be about a family, and they call themselves the Fellowship. But as you know, when one's writing a play, it's all about um, revealing layers and taking things away draft by draft by draft. One draft I ended up with, I lost quite a lot of the, of the family members and all I had left were Dawn and Marcia. And I felt, actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep the title. So it's a fellowship, it's a fellowship of two. You've got three, three generations of women in the play. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's the thread through these three generations that you want the audience to look at? Well, trauma in a weird way, but not, not, not in the sort of the dramatic kind, but just as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. um, each generation always thinks they're, they're the ones who are the most angriest. They're the ones who f first said this, first did that. And my generation, I think we grew up with, with a love of the Windrush generation, but also a sense of frustration because they came over here and they had to adapt and be subservient almost. Keep your head down, don't look for trouble. You know, we're here, we're here. This is a great opportunity for us. We're in a mother country. Let's not cause waves. So we look back, our generation looks, looks back on them and sort of thinks we were born here and we're the ones that have been treated like crap and we're not having it. Each generation's got, I suppose, their reasons why they behave the way they do. And it's just, it's just putting those three generations together on stage and conflicting and hopefully trying to find something that hopefully, you know, the next generation won't have to endure as much as, as, much as the others did. That was kind of my, my, my thinking in the play. The play, to me anyway, is funny. I mean, I don't even know. You know, I found myself laughing because of the feistiness of these two women, these two sisters. I mean, their obvious love for each other. Two women are the fulcrum of this play. How do you do that? Obviously, I'm not a black woman, but I know, I know those two women. I grew up with women like Dawn and Marcia. They're flawed, like many people. That made me want to write them even more. You don't see these people. No, you don't. You don't. And that's my point. On stage, very rarely on TV and film for that matter. You don't see them. There's just a part of me just comes forward. No, I want to fix that. Because again, I've seen some many terrific plays about the black American experience written by writers who I adore. But I thought, well, what about our stories? Where are we in the grand scheme of things? And I just kind of, we're slightly at the back of the queue. And I'm, I'm just doing what I can in my position to challenge that. What would you say to a writer now who's starting out? Well, I say to them, first of all, you're needed. Understand your worth and your importance in writing and theatre. You are needed. You are so badly needed. Your perspective, whatever that is, your point of view, is, is crucial. But I think you've got to have a passion yes. for whatever it is you want to write about. Yes. You can't be blasé or don't write anything because you think, oh, well, 
such and such wrote something about that, that, that thing, so that I should do the same. No, 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 don't do that. Find your passion and write it and do your homework as well, obviously. Yeah. What do you want the audience to? What do you, because you wrote it for an audience, yeah. I mean, what do you want them to feel? Well, not that far away from how I feel when I go and see a play, any play. I always look for three things. You know, I want to be moved, I want to be surprised, and I want to be educated. Don't, you know, just give me those three. I don't, you know, I don't care what your play is. I don't care where it's set. I don't care who wrote it. Give me those three and I'm happy. And I'll, I'll be happy. Regardless of your politics, regardless of your gender and your race, I think there's still a responsibility for a playwright to remember you're writing a play where people are going to pay money to come and see exactly. it. Exactly, and they're going to have an experience. So you have a duty exactly. to make it, to, to write it, regardless of the themes as well as possible. And you deliver it. You know, you deliver well, I hope so. You know, you land it, and that, and that is, uh, it's a pleasure to read. It'll be a pleasure to see. So ultimately, that's what, I, that's what I want my audience to come away with. And, and just a level of understanding. I remember one writer said this once, and I loved it. He said, my novels are about black people, but they are for everybody. And I just thought, oh, I like that. So I really, you know, I'm going to nick that. Thank you very much, Rosie. Beautiful play. Thank you very much. Thanks.